two. Oh, I thought we were only wearing three. You're not pushing me, are you? I uh, know. Yeah, I said, that's <laughs> what I've been reading the whole time. John chapter 2, we'll leave off uh, in verse 11 where we left off. We did the marriage of Cana, the miracle, mm -hmm. the water, the wine. So, Lord God, the Father, I just ask you to bless this time. Help us to grow, Lord God. Help us to, to you. exalt you. Lord God, keep Roberto safe as he's in New York. And look forward, Lord, yes, to bringing more people here. And, Lord, to exalt and lift up the holy word of Jesus Christ, who is the word. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, John chapter 2, verse 11. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of the miracles that Jesus in Cana, Galilee. And manifested forth his glory. No one else could have done what Jesus done. I mean, there are, there's been talk, you know, educators in the classroom, you know, say, well, look, they put a, a potion and changes water into wine, but it's undrinkable. Well, what Jesus made, they drank. And notice too, through I don't know if I said last time, but notice in mm -hmm. John chapter two, Jesus and the disciples never drank. And that's one of the things people say I, I, with somebody who wants to drink. Well, Jesus turned the water to wine, and then I'll say, "Well, show me where he yeah, drank it. Excuse. Show me where he drank it." After this, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother, Mary. And his brethren, brothers and sisters. So that defiles the Roman Catholic teaching that Mary was a perfectual virgin. And his disciples. And they continued there not many days. So it was a short time. So the trip down to Capernaum from Jerusalem is 16 and a half miles. His brethren, his brothers and sisters, and we'll read about them later. And then Mary. Notice Mary is traveling with Jesus. Mary is a right woman before God, the Holy Spirit, con conceived in her, the, the Jesus Christ. Mary remained to be a right woman during the pregnancy and birth of Jesus. And after the, the, Jesus, Jesus is now about 30 years old. She's still living right. Mary will be in heaven. But I don't exalt Mary as the Roman Catholics do. She's not a God. But she is a wonderful woman that of all the women in Jerusalem, of all the women in Judea, God did choose her. But she's not a god. She's not a goddess. It's plain and simple. Verse 13. And the Jews passed over, which I believe we talked about before. That's why I'm not getting into it. I think we looked at the Lamb of God and everything. And there'll be some more than Passovers. Maybe when we come up to the next Passover, may I go back into that study again. But I think we did it, so that's why I'm bypassing. But as we're now reading, Jesus has begun his ministry about 30 years old. This is after the baptism of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we know that Jesus is in the ministry for three and a half years? We date the Passovers. This is the first one in his ministry. Now, this is not the first one of his life. He's had 30 Passovers. He's about 30 years old. But now he's in the ministry. Now we can date and, and John will show us the Passovers. And we'll say we'll see three and a half. And by the time we get to the Passover, when Jesus Christ suffers and dies as a Lamb of God, there's been three and a half Passovers. And here's the first one. The Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up. To Jerusalem. Now, going up, Jerusalem is a mountain. Now, from chapter 212 to 213, it's 78.7 miles. It's about a four day walk. Now, remember, they don't have cars or anything like that. They walked or had animals. 
So with all this walking, 16 and a half miles, 18.7 miles. Listen, Jesus Christ and, and the men who were and the women were reading about in the Bible, they were no fruitcakes. They were muscular. They were fed. They all the walking that he did. Man, he go from here to here to here to here. Again, he went up. Jerusalem is a mountain. And this is one of the three feasts of the year that Jews were to, to go to Jerusalem, the male Jews. Let's look at that Deuteronomy 16. There are three times a year that the males were to appear. And what Jesus Christ is doing is he's fulfilling the law. He's doing what the law and the prophets told and tell him to do. And Deuteronomy 16, 16, he came to fulfill the law. He, Jesus Christ, has done what no man can do. Now that rich young, young, young that rich young ruler came, and Jesus said, "You know, honor your parents. Thou shalt not steal." Uh, he goes, "Listen." He goes, "I've done all that from my youth up, and there's no rebuke." And then he says, "Go sell all you have and, and come and follow me." Well, the guy had covetousness. That's one of the big ten. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ has. No sins. And when you read the law, he followed the law to every jot and every tittle. And Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord. Thy God in the place when he shall choose Jerusalem. Now in Deuteronomy, they're not even in the land yet, but it's Jerusalem. And here they are, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now that's the day after Passover. Passover included. The Feast of Weeks. And let me get to my notes here. Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Tabernacles. That's the feast I believe that Jesus is born in. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. They're to bring their sacrifice. They're to bring their offerings. So here's Jesus in John chapter 10, too. Mm -hmm. And he's prescribing what the law is, is, is for him. He's doing what the law says. Be there. So at these feasts of tabernacles, at the feast of Passovers, the place is overcrowded with Jewish males at least but when, when when Jesus was born in Bethlehem and it says there was no room at the end because the Roman government said all you Jews go to your home the lineage of your fathers you get there and you record yourself well there's no room at the end because everybody was in who was who was of Bethlehem was to be in Bethlehem now, we're here in Jerusalem. It is the time of the Passover. Not every Jew is going to be there, but all the Jews who, who obey God. And it's, it's like a church attend. All right, I, want to love, I, want, I love the Lord. I want to do right. I'm going to be in church. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be people there. They're not there because they love the Lord. They're there because if they don't see me there, you know, they're going to ridicule me. I'm not going to get the business. Mm. Or I, I'm there because, you know, I'm the deacon. I'm there because I'm the pastor. But there's males there. And Jesus is there because he wants to be. Because the law says to be. And it's proper for him to be there. Okay. So here we go. Verse 14. And we'll. Get down to um, I think twenty two is where we'll end. But okay, uh, fourteen. Now, now we've got to be 
reading the Bible. That sound, that sound, does that sound so simple? Mm -hmm. And yet churches are churches and the teachings get it wrong. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. If you don't get the Bible right, and you're not called on this planet Earth, you will stand before either judgment, judgment seat of Christ or a great white throne judge, and you're going to be ashamed. Now remember, we're living in lives of seeing church age, we're great, we're rich, we're wonderful, pat myself on the back. God says, you're poor, miserable, naked, rotten, and you make me sick. And found in the temple. That's Herod's temple. That's the temple that, that followed before that, Ezra and Nehemiah's temple. And followed before that, that was Solomon's temple. What followed behind that was the tabernacle of Moses that David set up. The temple is gone today, 70 A.D. The dumb of the rock is there today. Don't, and it is, many people, well, that's the church building. That's not the church. That's not the church. We'll look at that in a moment. It was found in the Jewish temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves. It's merchandising. It's the convenience store. Why are they selling doves and oxen and sheep? Because that's the sacrifice the law prescribed. And the law prescribed that, you know, you could sell what you have, bundle the money up, and then when you get to Jerusalem, you can buy all that you need. Major problem is they're doing the merchandising right there in the temple. He said, found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves. This is the holy temple, and it is the holy temple. It is the temple where the ark is gone. The ark is in heaven. But going all the way back to the oracle of, of Solomon, where there was the ark and there were the cherubim and the most holy place where only the priests were to be, where Uzziah, Uzziah went as a king and he offered this, uh, the, the incense and he wasn't supposed to, he got leprosy. The holy place of Jerusalem, of and for the Jewish people, there is merchandising. And think about oxen and sheep and dove. Let's be nice and let's be clean. But there's oxen poop and sheep poop and dove poop over the holy temple. There's poop in the holy temple. Now, you're not going to find a church with poop. Yet the church is full of poop. And changers of money, that is changing money. There was, there was two sets of money. There was temple tax coins only. Roman coins had a, 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 had a face on it, a head. Now that's taboo to the Jewish people. Thou shalt not make an image. Thou shalt not worship an image. So with the Roman money, they would come in, they would exchange it for temple money, which had no image. And it cost for a price. You know, we got to make money. I mean, it would, if it were today, the Jews would not, even though they do, the Jews would not accept our money if this is our period of time, it's not because it has pictures of dead men on it. Mm. No, you can't do that. So you would change your money for a temple tax that had no image on it for a price. This is all going on in the temple, verse 14. Merchandising in the house of God. 
This is the house of God. Not we. How many times we hear today, the house of God, the house of God. We don't go to the house of God. Not today. The house of God is the temple. If you're going to make your church building a house of God, oh, well, you know, we're under grace, we're not under law, then why are you putting your building under the law? Mm -hmm. Now we'll look at that. So, verse 15. And when he, Jesus, had made a scourge, that's a whip, of small cords, ropes, he grabbed some why are there ropes? What are you tying the animals up with? He's going around grabbing leashes. <laughs> if you want to call that. The, the, the ropes that would tie the oxen, the ropes that would tie the sheep. And he makes a whip of those, of those cords. And he drove them out of the temple. The people and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the table. And I got a quick note, note right there. What would Jesus do? He tore the place up. He's turning everything upside down. There is thievery going on because they're not getting the value of money. You got animal poop and animals running around in the temple. It's mayhem. And Jesus upsets the whole scene. So. That's the problem. In verse 16. And said, Jesus said unto them that sold the doves. Take these things, the doves, hence, get them out of here. Make not my father's house, there it is, and a house of merchandise. Run it back to verse 14, the temple. Run it to verse 15, the temple. So if you're going to say that this is the father's house, this is the Lord's house, Scripture with scripture in the same context of John chapter 2, you are saying that your place is the Father's house, your place is the temple. Nonsense. There is no holy of holies in my life, there is no oracles of oracles in my life. The Old Testament, there was rocks, beams, cedar wood. That's not today. So there is a rebuke in verse 16. Again, what would Jesus do? Knocking all the things over. Now think about it. At the verse 16, tables are being knock, knocked out. Sheep and oxen are, are being thrown out of the temple. Coins are, are rolling all over the place. There are people running, ducking, and hiding because he's got a whip. This is the same man that walked 78 miles. And now he's got a whip in his hands. Do you know what they're going to do to him? They're going to whip him. And they're going to do it without mercy. I guarantee Jesus Christ is doing it with mercy. He may not be whipping the animal. He may be whipping the animal. Like, get him out of here. Driving him out. Now think about it. There's tables knocked out. There's coins rolled all over the place. There's just mayhem by God, Jesus Christ. He upset the place. Think about it. Think about what Jesus done. In 2.17, And his disciples remembered that it is written, The zeal of, of thy house has eaten me up. Now let's run over to Psalm 61, where this verse is quoted from. 
<coughs> Always by scriptures. Psalm 61. And we're going to get into the house. Because I heard it today. Psalm 61, verse 9. There is no verse 9. 69, verse 9. My bad handwriting again. <laughs> 69, 9. Well, I've got terrible handwriting. Yeah. For the zeal of thy house has eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. That is what's said in back in John chapter 2. Now the disciples didn't remember this until afterwards. Verse 17, 217, disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thy house, thy house has eaten me up. What the money changers were doing, the animal hold, what was going on in the temple, the house, angered God, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. And 2.18, then answered the Jews and said unto him, okay, again, here's the picture. Tables are knocked over. Animals are flying out of the building. There are people running. They're ducking. They're getting out themselves. There's coins all over the place. Now, here comes the, Jew, here comes the Jews of the authority. Here comes the priest. What is this Megan? What is this problem? Uh, let's think about it like this. What if I went to your average Baptist church today? I went amongst the congregation. And I, <clears throat> I started preaching the truth. The pastor, the deacons, and the people of authority were going, they, they step in. What is the problem you hear? That's what's going on now. The Jews. Who has upset the business? Then he answered the Jews and said unto them, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that ye, seeing thou doest these things? Okay. So, tables knocked down, animals running out, money's rolling over the place. There's doves and pigeons flying all over the place. The tables are knocked over. And the Jews say, what sign? 1 Corinthians 1.22. Again, where are you going to look at, take the time to look at where the scripture is so we know what the scripture said? Because I don't want you to think I'm going to throw something at you. And 1, 1 Corinthians 1.22. The Jews require a sign. Signs are for Jews, not the church age. <gasps> oh, the earthquakes. Oh, this is, this is the sign of the times. Not for you Gentiles, you church. Well, the rapture. The rapture will happen at any moment that God says for it to happen. We're not to be looking for signs. We're looking for seasons. Of course, you get the Bible wrong again. So, in the midst of the temple, here is this, all this activity. Jesus started his ministry. And now he's already has a ruckus with the Jewish authority. This is why they hate him. You have just ruined the business in the temple. Who do you think you are? And you better back it up with a sign. They knew exactly who Jesus said he was and believed who he said he was. Because to say, show us a sign, they're saying, you think you're God. How dare you do this in God's house? Show us a sign.
Now, listen, word got around as quick as the media gets around today. And we just concluded chapter two last time in our study that Jesus did a sign. He turned the water into wine. He already did a sign. And what we concluded, verse 11, when we started our study today, the beginning of the miracles Jesus did in Cana, that sign already traveled through Jerusalem. Listen, people in Cana would be in Jerusalem now because all the male Jews would be gathering three times a year. And here they are in Jerusalem. Hey, did you see that guy over there? Yeah. Man, I was at this wedding. <laughs> Believe it or not, they ran out of wine. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? Yeah. You see that guy over there? Yeah. He turned water into wine, and let me tell you, it was the best wine. Mm. Really? Yeah. Show us a sign. They're already talking about the sign of Jesus. The very first one. And what they're saying, these are the Jews in authority of the temple. All right, you proclaim to be God. Remember his baptism we, we studied not too long ago? John proclaimed, uh, and he went in the water, and, and the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, and we heard a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. All right, now give us a sign. Because you have ruined the business. You have interrupted the service of the temple. Like if I were to go, I mean, listen, I've done it with the Catholics. I've done it with their Easter. I've done it with their Christmas. We've gone there and we stood outside their doors, outside their property on the sidewalk, and we preached the truth. We preached Jesus Christ. And then the officials come out, who do you think you are? I think I'm a Bible believer. Yeah. You're destructing the people. And then they grab all the gospel tracts last time and they, and they have a garbage can to collect all the garbage. Which is not gospel, it's the, it's the word of God. But that's how the Catholic Church treats the word of God. I just, now I didn't go into it because that's not the temple and that's not the church. But I destructed all the Catholic system last year when we went there preaching the truth and giving the truth about Mary's commandment for Catholics. Mary's commandment is what we read in chapter 2. Whatever my son said, do it. Boy, that upset them. Who do you think you Now, they didn't ask for a sign, but who do you think you are? I'm holding a King James Bible. Said, this is who I think I am. I'm called of God to preach the truth. You liars, you hypocrites, you phony. That's what Jesus just did. And people say, Christians will say, Stalin, you ought not to have done that. Jesus did it. You ought not to be named, name and name. Jesus named names, Paul named names, Peter named names. You just don't study and read your Bible. Jesus just began his ministry. And the very first thing he does, he turns the water into wine. Chapter 1, he comes from his baptism. You got, you got Peter, you got Andrew, you got Philip. Chapter 2, he's turned the water into wine. Chapter 2, first, here's, the, here's his first public ministry of, of, of the Passover. He goes in the temple, he finds all this merchandise, and he just ruck houses the whole place. And here comes the pastor, the preachers. And the, I'm saying pastors, preachers, and all that, because we're going to look at something, what they teach wrong. Here comes the priest, the very priest set up by God in the Old Testament. Here they go. Who do you think you are? You better prove it with a sign. That's what's going on. Verse 19. And Jesus answered and said, okay, here's the answer, folks, unto them. Here's the sign. Destroy this temple, 
And in three days, I will raise it up. You want a sign? I'll give you a sign. Resurrection. Now, they wanted a dog and pony show right there. I don't know what they wanted, but they wanted Jesus to do something right there. Jesus, I'll give you, I'll give you a sign. Now, look at 1 Corinthians 15, 4. I'll show you something. This is why I did John. John is a wonderful gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 4. First Corinthians 15, 4. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Jesus told us to go in all the world and preach the gospel. All right. Here's the gospel. And we're going to look at verse 4. We're going to look. Jesus said, I'll show you the resurrection. That's a sign. You want a sign? I'll give you the resurrection. All right. Here it is. Watch. 15, 4, 1 Corinthians. And he was buried. That he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. According to what scriptures? Here's one right here in chapter 2, verse 19. You want a sign? I'm going to raise his body up in three days. And that was a public testimony. If we ever finish John, I don't know if we will. That even the, even the, even the people here right now. The people in authority of the Jews. Well, we heard that deceiver say three days and three nights, he's going to resurrect that body. You know, and at, least the, at least his disciples come and steal the body, put a seal on that tomb. They knew full well what Jesus said. Looking forward to Calvary and trying to stop it. Jesus has already told them, I'll give you a sign. When you put me on that cross and I die on that cross and when you put me in that grave, I'm coming out. And his disciples are there and his mother is there and the Jews and the most three, one of the three times of the year are there to hear him say three days and three nights, I'm coming out of that tomb. How many of those people were there when he came out of that tomb? None. Don't say the women. The women were on their way. And they were going bringing spices for a dead body. Not a live body. You don't bring spices for a body coming out of the grave. You bring the spices because there wasn't enough time to prepare the dead body. So the songs that say, oh, if I would have been there the day that Jesus died, I would. No, you wouldn't. No one believed. Because had they believed Jesus, he said three days, and we're not, this is the beginning. Three days, I'm going to resurrect this body. This is the beginning. I don't know how far we're going to get, Lord is going to give it. But he will tell his disciples often, I'm going to Jerusalem. They're going to spit upon me. They're going to beat me. They're going to kill me. Three days and three nights later, I'm coming out of that grave. Resurrected according to scriptures, Paul says. And not one of those disciples were there waiting for him to come out of that grave. Don't tell me you're going to be there and believe. Not even his disciples believe. But that's the, that's the sign that he gives to the Jewish authority. He says, destroy this temple. Now, here's another cause. Here's the fallacy of the Roman Catholic Church. Upon this rock, Peter, he's going to, we're going to build our Catholic Church. No, no, no. You know what Jesus is doing? Upon this rock, Peter, pointing to himself. I'll build the church. Now, right now, 219, I guarantee, destroy this temple. Destroy this temple. He's not saying destroy this temple. Destroy this temple. And that's where Baptists get all set. You know, the church house. This is the house of God. No, it's not. No, it's not. And we'll look at that in a moment. So, verse 20. Verse 19 is the resurrection. Verse 20. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple building. 
refurnish, redeck. Will thou rear it up in three days? Now it's it's a physical. The stones and wood and and and, and the destruction of this place. You're going to destroy this place, and it will seventy A.D. But if you destroy the stones and the rock like it was at the Babylonian captivity. In three days, you're going to raise it up. It took 14, six years. Now, verse 21 is very important for, for the thing. It's very important for, for Jesus Christ. And it's very important to the church. Ready? He's talking to the Jews. But he spake of the temple of his body, not the building. You know, you know when they speak, when the church speaks today, we're, we're looking and going to we're going to scold out the church. When they look, this uh, this is the house of the Lord. This is the house of God. Mm -hmm. You mean with lost people in it? Well, you see, when the high priest went in, they tied a rope around his ankle. So if he died, he would have died with that with that rope around his ankle right away. Mm -hmm. One king entered the holy place, wasn't supposed to be in that holy place, and the priest gave him time to get out. He wouldn't listen, and he got leprosy. The three sons, or the two sons of Aaron went in there with the wrong fire. <laughs> They're gone. Now, Now, see, the Jews thought about the Baptist, this building. And Jesus said, no, let me correct your heresy. This body. This, and and those, look, verse 21, but he spake of the temple of his body. He's not saying that to the Jewish people. That's a Holy Spirit note for us. That, that, that's not said by Jesus. If you got a red lettered Bible, verse 21 is not red lettered or it should not be. That's the Holy Spirit saying, uh, 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 time out, stop the coin, stop the animal. Let me make a little footnote here. He wasn't talking about the building, he was talking about his body. Baptist. So let's look at 1 Corinthians. We're going to, now listen, I'm not a Paul only. And what Paul only is in 1 Corinthians 3 is there are people out there. I got one as a Facebook friend. And I won't share it because you got you to gotta decipher what he says some good things and he says some bad things. You got to really decipher what he says. Paul only ism is Paul wrote, excluding Hebrews, 12 books. Only those 12 books. Now, Matthew's not written to the Christian. It's not. And he'll say that. But there are some applications in Matthew we can apply spiritually. I can take Matthew. Now, the church goes too far sometimes. But there are things in Matthew I can apply to the Christian. Now, a man with Paul only ism says, only what Paul wrote. That's it. Nothing else. Now, Hebrews is written to Hebrews. Now the church will go say, it's written to Christian, Christian Hebrews. That's why the book is called Hebrew. And they don't get it right. But let's look at what we're doing. I'm not a Paul only, but we're going to ask, Paul, can you tell us about the church building and the church building? You are? Okay, thank you, Paul. 1 Corinthians 3.16. You ready? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Holy Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You know what there's some Baptists saying? That the Holy Spirit of God is in our altar. And when you come to our altar, you can't find altar anywhere in Paul's writings at all for the church age. Paul said, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you are the temple of God. You know, there are Baptist churches called Temple of This, Temple of That. 
-hmm. Ye, you Corinthians, you're the temple. And we can run over to Matthew, we won't, but it says where two or three are gathered together. Right? There I am in mission. So how come Baptists don't build three three church buildings next to each other? Because it's not talking about buildings. Again, the house of the Lord. I am the house of the Lord. Excuse me. Inside me dwells the Holy Spirit. I've got the oracle of God inside of me. What are you going to do with an underground church who didn't have no buildings? All right, we'll, we'll move on. Paul, what? You got more, Paul? Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God. So if I went in, if, if I went and knocked things over in the church house, am I defiling the temple of God? Him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So if I go and I'm not going to, because the Bible says obey the laws that be. But if I go knocking things over inside of a church house and causing destruction in the church house. Mm -hmm. God says it ain't the buildings, it ain't the pew, it ain't the pictures, it's you. And what, what Paul is talking about there, the Christian, you want to drink alcohol as a Christian? You want to mess up your life with alcohol? Fine, I'll mess up your kidneys and I'll take your life. You want to have a, a, a wrong sexual encounter with the wrong sexual people? Fine, I'll give you a, I'll give you a sexual disease and it, you, you can suffer for the rest of your life. That ain't about your church building. I had one time I was in the church and I had, I stepped in a wad of gun, gum in the parking lot and I brought the wad of gum under my shoes in on the rug of the church. And, oh, that was a heresy. Mm. Never mind, we know who put the water gun on gum on the sidewalk for people to step on. But the person I filed up the rug of the church with a wad of gum. In complete innocence. I didn't know I did it. They were all upset. People get all upset. You got the wrong color carpet. That's the wrong thing. But Paul is still speaking. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6, verse 19. I hope it's 619. That looks like a questionable number. Yep, 619. You ready? So if you go to a temple, Baptist church, And there's been some great men of the Bible who had a church called Temple something. It's wrong. 619. What? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There's more. Know ye, ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Not your building. That altar is not God meeting you at that altar. See, you made your church, you made your altar the oracle of God. And if you cross our altar, you're going to get leprosy. Get out of our church. You think I'm full of it? I got kicked out of church because I did not like the VBS decorations in the house of God. No, that stuff didn't belong there. Mm. You see, the building has become the God. The building was part of God in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. The temple is gone, the dumb of the rock. You dummy. 
<sighs> Would you say, Paul, 2 Corinthians 6? Okay. Thank you, Paul. I love when Paul speaks because it's written black and white. You know, what I teach you could be wrong, but if we're reading out the Holy King James Bible, 2 Corinthians 6, 16. What agreement have the temple of God with idols? Do you know that in Jeremiah's time there were idols in the temple? Do you know in Jeremiah's time there were as many as gods and church buildings as there were streets in Jerusalem to all manner of the gods? You know, there are church buildings today that holds that house or did house Tammuz. That's not the house of God. And yet, in Jeremiah's time, the temple had Tammuz celebrations. In Jeremiah's time, well, if we don't offer the bread to the queen of heaven, we need to be studying Jeremiah because Jeremiah is going on in the church house right now. Church house, I mean the people, and we'll look at that in a moment. I'm not talking about the buildings. So let's keep reading. Ye are the temple of the living God. I am the temple. As God has said, I will dwell in them. God doesn't dwell in the church building. He dwells in me. And when I defile the temple, if I were to smoke cigarettes and inhale tobacco, I'm having God in his oracles take alcohol, uh, take, alcohol take tobacco into the Holy Spirit in me. When I sin, I'm making God sin. And he's holy. Some Baptists, if you sin against them, you do something to their building. You got to come to church. You got to come to this church. You want to be a member of our church? I've had problems with many Baptists. Uh, hold on. Am I the body and temple? Uh, yeah. Well, if I'm saved, I'm saved. April 25th, 1987. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm saved, right? Yeah. I've already joined the church. The church that's the body of Jesus Christ. Why are you trying to make your church the exclusive club that only yours to be invited? You see the heresy? And then preachers will call me out for what I'm teaching, but I'm just showing you the Bible. Once I became a Christian, the Holy Spirit indwelled in me. I am in the body of Christ. The problem today in the Laodicean church age is many of the Christians don't want to fellowship with me because I have the strange and weird doctrine that goes against what they believe and what they like. Interesting. So... When we talk about house, Paul says in Romans 16, 5, likewise, greet the church that's in their house. Hello, Mr. Building, how you doing? You having church in your house? You're not talking to me, Mr. Church Building. Did I offend you? First, uh, First Corinthians one eleven, by them which are the house of Cleo. That's the family. Are you telling me your building is a family? First Corinthians sixteen fifteen. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus. That's the family, not a building. First Corinthians sixteen nineteen. The churches of Asia salute you. Can you see the shutters and the doors and the gutters? Aquila and Priscilla salute you, which is in the Lord, with the with the church that is in their house. <laughs> Wait, come to the church house, and in the church house, there's a church. Correct, Paul. It's not the building. 
Right. And it just goes over and over and over. Let's see. Um, and Philemon too, to our beloved Ophelia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, to the church in thy house. Now the Baptist will say the church house. You're wrong. It's a house of family inside of a building. And many times it wasn't even inside a building. Go back to John chapter 2. So when you try to make your church building, your church assembly, an outstanding one of all the communities, you are putting yourself as the temple was to be the temple of all temples in Jerusalem that was under the law and for the nation of Israel alone. You are robbing and stealing from the Jews and the Old Testament. And there'll be people who are going to hear this message. They're going to say, heretic, heretic. Videos, you'll find these videos. But they're, they're under a, a gazebo in a park. There were no walls. And it felt nice. And we didn't have to pay for air conditioning. We didn't have to pay for electrical. Light. God provided it. Amen. And there'll be many Christians. Oh, yeah, I, I'll come. Where, where do you meet? We meet in the park in the gazebo. No walls. Like. No padded seat. No, no, well, they got the kind of, you know, the, the, the picnic tables. They got the little holes. And they, they're, they're sore on your butt for a while. No, I ain't going to go. The temple is here in John chapter 2. You know what happens to that temple? 70 AD, Titus comes and rips that, that, that temple down and destroys that temple. And within time of history, the Dome of the Rock is there today. Now, that temple is going to be rebuilt. That building is going to be rebuilt. Do you know what the abomination, the desolation is that, that Paul, uh, Jesus speaks about in, in uh, Matthew and Daniel speaks about in his book of Daniel? The, the abomination of desolation is in that building at the three and a half years. They're going to walk in that building and in that building in the most holy place is the Antichrist saying, hello, here I am. I want Jewish blood to drink. Start killing Jew in the temple. Mm -hmm. And then there's a millennial temple, Ezekiel speaks about, a millennial temple in the millennium, but Jesus Christ, the king of the Jews, of David's throne, is seated over here on David's throne across from the temple. How do you know that Jesus is going to sit across from the temple? Because David looked out his, looked out his window and saw the curtains of the tabernacle and said, God, we can do better than that. Jesus is in the temple and they're all upset because Jesus raised a huckus in the temple. Now, there's another problem we have. We have another problem. And I don't know if this is right, and I don't know if this is wrong, but if you look at verse number 15 again, when he had made a, a scourge, that's a whip, a small course, and drove out them out of the temple, and the sheep, the oxen, poured out the changers of money and overthrew the tables. There are some churches that do not allow the, the selling of movies, of books, cassette tapes, and mm -hmm. videos, and at all. That's the temple. That's a building. The church age, we're not a building. We're not a temple. And I could sell you a Bible. You say, Stolly, you're going to this store. Yes, I'm going to this store. Hey, you know, they got good Bibles there. Get me a Bible. Let me know how much it costs. And 
I'll, I'll buy. Okay, and I go to the store, I, wherever I go out of town, I get whatever you need. And I say, well, guess what? Well, here it is. Well, how much is it? Well, the receipt says twelve thirty-five. All right, uh, thirteen dollars. Keep the change. He hands me thirteen dollars, and I hand him a Bible. Did we not just do business in the temple and the body of Christ, according to Paul? Now, is that wrong? No. Because Christians do business with other Christians. But the, the Baptists have this thing, oh, the, the, the Baptist building. That's John chapter 2. That's still under the law. 70 AD, the temple is going bye-bye. And, and like we read in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, 6, 19, 2 Corinthians 6, 16, we become the temple. We become the oracle. Now, is it wrong to do merchandise in a church building? That, that's up to you. But look how far it got with the business. I mean, there's where we are in John chapter 2, there is oxen poop, there is sheep poop, there is bird poop. And there are exchangers of money, and there are people who love God, love Jehovah, and they're being swindled, and they're being deceived right there in the church house. And I guarantee there are some people out there, not all people, they will say, well, when you buy our cassette tape, shows how old I am. When you buy our CD mm -hmm. for $16.99, that is the exact cost it costs to us. Well, maybe it is, or maybe it isn't. I have, I have heard people in the ministry deceive others. But we cannot, we cannot put the church building ahead of the church people. There's a big difference. And when you say, oh, we're going to have to be members of our church. I became a member of the church when I received Jesus Christ, when you received Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Paul said that the Holy Spirit came and dwelt with us. I'm already a member. What are you, a, a leak member of members? You have not followed your Bible. And we'll close John chapter 2, verse 21. But he spank of the temple of his body, not the building. Now, if there's an oracle of all oracles, you would not think be the body of Jesus Christ. I mean, don't you think that the, that the, the temple had a spider living in it somewhere? Maybe a bird? <laughs> it made her nest? Isn't it spoken about in Psalm? You know, the sparrows made her nest in the house of God? Jesus didn't have birds. He didn't have spiders. He was the holy of all the holy. And we're not talking. He's not talking about. But he spanked of the temple of his body. That's not Jesus saying that. That's the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Make this note. 